Hey, greetings, everyone. Lieutenant Colonel Alan West and candidate for the chairmanship of the Republican Party of Texas. One of the things that I promised that I would be doing is to have chairman's chats. And we're going to continue on with that right now because I, I believe it's important that you uh, practice what you say that you're going to preach. And so today we want to look at one of these issues that's happening here in the United States of America. But we want to look at it from a Texas perspective. And we got a couple of great guests that we're going to discuss the issue of Christianity and its role and its relationship with government and with the politics and policies thereof. Uh, first of all, we have Reverend Pastor Dave Welch. Dave Welch is the founder and executive director of the Texas Pastor Council and Houston Area Pastor Council, interdenominational and interracial ministries of and for pastors based in Houston, Texas. The Houston Area Pastor Council was birthed in 2003 is now, and now a national model of diversity and effectiveness. Affiliated councils have also been launched in other cities in Texas, leading to the formation of the Texas Pastor Council, as well as launching of the United States Pastor Council, having assisted pastors in cities from Sacramento, California to Virginia Beach, Virginia, in starting pastors' councils. Pastor Dave was one of the pastors whose sermons was subpoenaed by the Houston mayor in the infamous Houston Five incident as the pastors led the defeat of the radical LGBT special rights ordinance. David is an ordained pastor. He and his wife, Valerie, of 37 years, have five adult children, all married, and 10 grandchildren up to this point. There's always a case for more grandkids. <laughs> We're also joined by Houston area pastor Willie Davis. Willie Davis spent his life in the service of others. He was raised in the third ward by a single mother and a home with 10 siblings. He is no stranger to hardship. Wealth and comfort were luxuries he was unfamiliar with, but these hard times taught him a lesson that he would carry with him for the rest of his life. It's people and relationships we have with them that is important. As Willie puts it, we had very little money and it was a hard time, but what we did was that we had each other. What he learned from taking care of families and friends, Pastor Davis, Pastor Davis cared with him when he joined the United States Army as a paratrooper, folks. I like paratroopers. You know that. When he yes. left the military, he answered a higher calling of service and became a pastor. With three decades of ministering to the spiritual needs of those around him, Pastor Willa Davis tirelessly tended to his congregation at the McGregor Palm Community Baptist Church on the south side of Houston and continues to do so today. After six decades of serving others, after serving friends, family, and our country, after ministering to the spiritual needs of those around him, Willie Davis continues to seek to serve the city of Houston, which is the fourth largest city in the United States of America. Pastors Welch, Pastor Davis, welcome. It's a pleasure to be with you. Thank you, Great Colonel. to be with you, Carl. Now, first and foremost, I pray that your, you and your families are doing very well in this time of this COVID-19 uh, virus, and also that you guys are, you know, taking care of your, your flocks, because that's still an important part of being a pastor. Amen. You know, I want to start this conversation by just reading this story about what just recently happened in uh, the state of Florida, state that I kind of know. I lived there for 11 years. Sheriff's deputies on Monday arrested the head of a Florida church, accusing him of ignoring local orders against mass gatherings due to the coronavirus pandemic and showing reckless disregard for human life, authorities said. The river at Tampa Bay Church held services over this past weekend, and Hillsborough County Sheriff Chad Cronister said he had no choice but to take action against the pastor, Rodney Howard Brown. Last night, I made the decision to seek an arrest warrant for the pastor of a local church who intentionally and repeatedly chose to disregard the order set in place by our president, our governor, the Centers for Disease Control, and the Hillsborough, Hillsborough County Emergency Police Group, Chronister told reporters. His reckless disregard for human life put hundreds of people from his congregation at risk and thousands of residents who may interact with them this week. Howard Brown was booked for unlawful assembly and violation of public health emergency rules, both second degree misdemeanors. Chronister said his office had direct contact with the church, telling it not to pack the pews. Pastor Howard Brown's actions were a direct 
violation of Executive Order 20-5, which went into effect on March the 20th, limiting gatherings, including faith-based gatherings, to less than 10 people. The church posted a live stream of Sunday morning services, and the sanctuary appeared to be crowded, with far less than six feet of separation between worshipers, but not completely packed. Matt Staver, a lawyer who often takes high-profile conservative legal cases, insisted his, his, church, his client's church did enforce a six-foot separation rule and dispense hand sanitizer to worshipers, among other safety practices. The problem with this administrative order is it was not reviewed by constitutional experts or vetted by a deliberative body, according to a statement issued by Staver on Monday. Gentlemen, you have been there before with the ordinance there in Houston. Where do we find this balance, this relationship? Because many people are scratching their heads. If you go to the Bible, it says in Hebrews 10 and 25, forsake not the assembly of thyselves together. You also right. know that in Romans, it talks about Christians being subject to government. And Jesus Christ even said when the Pharisees challenged him with the coin, with uh, Caesar's image, he said, render unto Caesar what is Caesar's. I want to start off with you first, Pastor Welch. Where do you see this balance? Where, where can we get clear uh, definition? Because without a doubt, in our First Amendment, we have two rights, freedom of religion and the free exercise thereof and the right for peaceably assembling? Well, those are great questions, and it is an unprecedented dilemma that we are facing right now, really before our eyes, that none of us in our lifetimes would have ever envisioned. And the questions that uh, we would have, you know, we would talk theoretically about the, the possibility down in the future that are now before us, and all under the guise of a public health emergency. And this is part of the question that we have to ask as we're going forward here, because quite candidly, uh, that we've been, been given uh, a reason for these executive orders that have now been placed on uh, by city mayors and county judges, which have placed restrictions on the churches of uh, being able to gather. Uh, but the question also is, uh, is this a proper jurisdiction? In other words, uh, who gave that kind of power to a mayor or to a county judge to infringe upon and, and make those make those kinds of decisions that says to the church, in spite of what the First Amendment says, that you cannot gather, and, uh, and if you do so, that you will be fined and penalized and possibly jailed. Uh, and that, that's very troubling because, frankly, uh, and especially when we look at the numbers, you know, I, we've been following these every day. And in, in the state of Texas right now, there's, with a state of 28 million people, we have under 50 deaths. And every one of those are, are important. Nobody diminishes that. Uh, but we have just over 3,000 documented cases. Uh, but what we're seeing and dealing with, uh, Colonel West, is, is the, the medical community has painted a, a doomsday worst case scenario. And that's somewhat their, their task, recognizing that you have to try to project, but that's all it is. But based on projections, what one might recall, we may even say reverse acts of Hebrews 11 of uh, faith, that they were projecting on things they couldn't see, things they mm -hmm. couldn't have evidence of, but, hope, but basically planning for the worst, but then taking civic action and taking away rights. Uh, so I, the pastors all over have been right wrestling with this question, Colonel. And I, I think this is a moment that we're going to have to look very, very carefully at. Not only what's happening right now, but when this is through, uh, what do we do to have to restore uh, the boundaries back to protect the full practice of the, of the religious faith in this country? You know, that's a great point. And uh, Pastor Davis, uh, I want to come to you because when we look at what is happening, um, it, it appears that there has been a, a suspension of constitutional rights. And I don't know if we are really at that crisis point. And I don't know if anyone has come out and said, okay, because of this coronavirus, here are the rights that we're going to suspend for you know, the, the civilian population. And it always takes me back to that incredible quote from Benjamin Franklin, uh, those who give up essential liberty for temporary safety 
will in the end have neither safety nor liberty. What do you say about this predicament that we see? Because you are a pastor of a, a large congregation. Good question to uh, Colonel Allen. One of, one of the reasons why it's going to take some very, very um, leadership skills and possessions to really identify what the church is, world is going through universally uh, as well. But one of the things that's most important to me is, is the fact that when these type of laws and orders impede upon the church, uh, as uh, Dave was eloquently saying, there are some, this is an unprecedented period of time, but for the congregation and the pastors who lead our churches, we have a difficult situation. And I think the problem that I think we're running into from my standpoint is the fact that so many of these leaders fail to communicate with the pastoral leaders. They're not, they didn't, you know, they're, they're not consulting with the pastors to see what the parameters are because they are violation of violating our constitutional right to worship. And um, I noticed uh, in this, in the issue with uh, the Rivers Church, uh, with uh, Pastor Brown, Rodney Brown, is it? Um, that when this was being done, it came off as if um, it was a pitting between one church and the other. Because what he did in the interview, uh, in the press conference, I noticed the sheriff brought in first the attorney general and had him to speak. And then he followed, he followed with another pastor standing to his rear uh, on his left side and had him to come up to speak. So it, the, the, the impression was kind of sort of the same thing that we went through when we were dealing with the issue in, in Houston regarding the hero ordinance. Political politics oftentimes generally try to pit uh, one against the other, even within the body of Christ. And I think that's a wrong perspective to take. So there are some parameters that many of our pastor leaders are going to have to take in consideration. And, but we need to make sure that our leaders respect the house of God, respect the leadership of the church. You know, that's a very interesting point you bring up, uh, Pastor Davis, because you all have this pastor's council. And when you talk about, you know, the implementation unilaterally of a lot of these decisions, these ordinances, these executive orders from county judges that we have here in Texas and mayors, you know, we are looking at Mayor Bill de Blasio of New York City, who has just come yep. out and said that if synagogues don't comply, we're going to shut them down. You look at uh, the uh, governor of Virginia, Ralph Northam, who's saying that he's going to charge people with uh, a first degree misdemeanor, which is two thousand five hundred dollars and up to wow. in jail. Wouldn't it wouldn't it behoove these these elected officials to sit down with pastors and have a sharing of information and really talk about and get their cons consultation, much the same as I would suppose Anise Parker did not do in the case down there in uh, Houston. Pastor Welch? Well, that's exactly right. You know, and the other thing, by the way, and the, and the other caveat with de Blasio, Mayor de Blasio, he didn't say sh just shut down churches, he said permanently. And that means if you don't comply now, you're, we're locking your doors. And that, that's just unheard of, literally, since the founding of this country. Uh, so we're, we're talking about the raw exercise of power by government here that, uh, that is exactly that which our founding fathers simply, simply said no and um, started our new country under a constitution to assure we have unalienable rights that have been preserved and protected. And uh, the, the, well, the thing that's lost in this discussion, frankly, this is a, a major part of the, of the poor education of pastors on this set of principles of governing authority and the misapplication of Romans 13 so frequently in these kinds of moments and times. Uh, because first of all, what we do know is that in this country, all authority that has been given from in heaven on earth, you can give it to Jesus Christ, according to Matthew 28, 18, and then that authority is delegated in the very words of the Constitution, we the people, in order to form a more perfect union. All the authority comes from the people to the government. And these are public servants. They're not kings, they're not emperors. And there's a, it's a different application. They work for us. Now, they are given authority, they're delegated authority, but 
but the issue for the moment that we have to really look at and assess very clearly uh, from the church standpoint is uh, where where is that line, and, uh, mm-hmm. and are we going to be subject uh, as a church to the state and and these areas? Nobody's arguing that we that we need to keep people safe. Most churches were already complying with this, this as this pastor was safe the, the 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 social distancing, the excess hygiene measures, all those things to keep people safe. Uh, but uh, we are at a moment where the we, we've allowed this to get to this point, I think, in our country. We all know it. We've seen it, this creeping socialism, an expansion of government authority into the people's lives now for, for, for decades. So we're at a logical point where now we're the trigger is a public health crisis that we're frankly not even sure uh, how accurate the data really is. But now that's the premise for the suspension of constitutional rights. And that, that should... Uh, I mean, that should concern everyone, and the church is going to have to stand. This is, a, as uh, one of our pastors here, Steve Riggle, says, this is a show-up moment, and the pastors are going to have to stand how much time, how much freedom we're going to give away. You know, great, great point, Pastor Welch, and I want to go back to Pastor Davis because, you know, we've heard this phrase before, never let a good crisis go to waste. So to waste, when you yeah. talk about the confusion that people have with – the whole issue of separation of church and state, which was is not found in our Constitution Declaration, it is just a concept that Thomas Jefferson wrote about to the Danbury uh, Baptist Convention of Connecticut. What Thomas Jefferson did not want us to have was a head of state who also created and made himself the head of church. In other words, what King Henry VIII did was because he did not get his way because of him wanting to have a divorce from the Catholic Church, he created his own religion. And those who did not uh, submit and subject themselves to it, they were persecuted and prosecuted. So now do we kind of see an instance where even here in the United States of America, government officials are starting to truly violate what Thomas Jefferson called that separation of church and state. They're starting to impose their will and uh, impose their agenda and their ideological principles upon the church. Absolutely, Colonel West. I think you are dead on target with that. I think we as pastor leaders, uh, especially in the circle of pastors that I uh, go uh, am around, and of course I'm a member also of the Houston Air Pastor Council, and this discussion between Dave and I and other pastors happened quite often because there seems to be a slow progress of taking away the powers and the, and the rights of the church, the Christian body. And even in our own country, we've seen, whereas we have even been from political leaders, have been, been used in speeches to, um, to identify as if we are the enemy. You know, one particular person expressed the fact that we, the people like us who clings to our guns and Bibles. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, the, you know, we've got to be very cautious about what we allow our elected officials to do. And they will concur with this. When we were involved, uh, Colonel West, when we were involved with the hero ordinance, one of the major things that happened is you stated in conversation that the threat of our rights federally under the constitution was being threatened by a sitting mayor, a sitting mayor, not a governor, but an actual mayor who threatened us and felt like that she had the power to actually take away the right, the constitutional right that we have. And don't think that there are others out there who feel like they have the same power. Uh, Even with the mayor of of New York, I think that's a stretch. And some of what our county judge is doing, and even there in Dallas County. So, Mm -hmm. yes, I I think that we need to be very, very astute to the fact of what we give up in Mm -hmm. uh, uh, our power and authority to someone else. Uh, We need to be mindful of that. Well, you know, Pastor Welch, you know, speaking of Texas and some of the continued challenges, we know that a former member of the House of Representatives and presidential candidate, Robert Francis O'Rourke, said that if churches do not accept a same-sex agenda, then they should have their tax-exempt status taken away from them. So, again, it, it appears that there 
you know, much the same as what Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had to face was <laughs> when, when is that time when the, the Christian faith is going to stand up and say, hey, you guys are pushing a little bit too far. And, you know, the concern is this. You know what people are going to say, and we've already heard it said so far, is that these extremist Christians are out there. They're not following the rules. They're not going by executive orders, and, and they're putting people's life and health at risk. How do you combat that, uh, that assertion from the progressive socialist left that's permeated throughout their media? That's a great question, Colonel, because, look, there really are multiple health aspects to this, one of which is a PR issue. It's... Do, we, do I want to be known as the church, for example, that uh, helped spread COVID-19, uh, where somebody mm -hmm. in my church came and got it, and, and they may have gotten it somewhere else, but, uh, but all of a sudden I've, I've you know, been a part of that problem. Uh, and so there's a, a concern and a caution on, it, on every pastor's part that we want to be uh, prudent and careful on that. But when you look at the, uh, the, thing, the actions taken, uh, of these extreme measures, I think that's again where where the, the questions we're all looking at going uh, is, is the ends justify the means here, and what's what's the, the the core question at hand for the church? And you know, when we're like, you think about and part of this problem, frankly, lies at the feet of the church. Uh, the growing disrespect for the church itself in this country and amongst our leaders, expressed by the same mayor we had issues with on this other point tried to tax the church a few years before that. We had to fight her back on that. Uh, and she said, the church just needs to pay its fair share. Uh, we've heard that same phrase coming from bureaucrats and other places who see the church as just another social institution. And when, when you know, Matthew 5, what's really interesting is that the, it, it from, goes, goes from in the Beatitudes where Jesus said, blessed are those who are persecuted for my namesake. And two verses later, it says, you're, you're the, the salt of the earth, mm -hmm. but if the salt loses flavor, it's for what? Good to be nothing but cast down and trampled upon by men. And the question today is, are we being persecuted for his name's sake because we're, we're exercising uh, his kingdom and his cause and his righteousness so profoundly as a church, uh, which ought to show up much differently in the way the nation looks, or are we being trampled upon because we've become saltless? Uh, and that's a serious question for the church our, ourselves today. We've given so much up because of the weakness of the church, the lack of involvement by the church, and even choosing our own leaders, and being, getting our people out to vote, uh, speaking the truth on, on issues of the day. And so all of a sudden, uh, we're, you know, the church is just one more entity that it gathers people together, and because it gathers people together, it creates a threat that could harm, so therefore, we're gonna we're gonna shut you down. Uh, that different standing the church used to have because it was the church that long preceded the state is something that is is a great concern. Well, Pastor Davis, and and you're right about one thing. It is all about image and also message. So in this current moment with this coronavirus pandemic, which as Pastor Welch said, you know the the numbers in some ways don't just don't add up to the response that we're seeing. How does the church become proactive and, and get ahead of this? Because without a doubt, uh, the pastor down in Tampa, Pastor Brown, is going to be held up as some type of nefarious example of Christians not abiding by the government. And of course, you're going to get people to cherry pick verses, because as we know, uh, the left can be very good at cherry picking verses. Where do we go from, from here at this point, and how do we get a proactive message out, and how do we make sure that we bolster our congregations in this very time of, uh, I think, need of prayer and greater faith? Uh, good question, uh, Colonel. Um, what I've done, I started uh, a week ago, uh, Monday a week ago, doing every night, every night. Six days, did my service on Sunday morning online. I came on every single night, and I heard earlier in a conference that was, I was on and pastor was suggesting what they were doing. But here's what, I, here's what I would suggest. What I did, I started what I call waiting in the word. I started what called waiting in the word. So every night at 7.30, 
my congregation know that I'm online. Why? Because I'm saying since we have to wait, since many people being furloughed off their jobs, mm -hmm. being laid off, why not we wait in the word of God? I think every pastor leader ought to take the position to encourage their people. And not only do I take that hour, Colonel, to walk them through the word of God, but it also allows me to inform my congregation of the political issues and what the pastor's view is on that, uh, of that process. We've got to become uh, what we know, especially in, the, in black history, we know that uh, in, in slavery and after slavery, the church became the vehicle by way we informed our people as well as teaching our people. So I think nothing is different. I think we need to become very creative in giving our people right information and standing up uh, in the word of God in these very difficult times. Uh, I was on a conference today uh, with my officers about what we're going to be doing uh, pick up for communion. This is the first Sunday, you know, in the Baptist church. Traditionally, we do our communions on first Sunday. You can do it anytime, to be honest, but that's what we do. So we were mapping out how we're going to have our members to come in, get their communions, take it home, get ready to be served online when we do our serving of communion. Those of us that we also talked about drive-bys, you know, in doing that. I also think is ironic, Colonel, I want to make mention of this. My wife is from Louisville, Kentucky. Her classmate lost her husband. He went into the hospital over 12 days ago, walked in the hospital, sick, didn't know what was going on. Didn't die from coronavirus, but he had an infection that ultimately took his life. Now, in Louisville, it is the law. You cannot gather more than 10 people. So on yesterday, they did a service online. The pastor, his family of 10, was in the church, and they did a service to put away her husband. Uh, my wife and I watched it online. Now, she was not allowed to see her husband, even during the worst times when he was in ICU in the hospital. But thank God, she did get a chance to have a service for him. Her and their daughter in a service with their pastor. And so for leaders to evoke their orders on people, when we as pastors are trying to abide by some of the protection of our people, but not to the point that we ought to be separated from the fact that we cannot reach our people. So I think we've got to come up with more creative ways. And uh, as you said earlier, these authority, people in authority, they need to talk to us. They need to speak to the congregant. So, but I would advise pastors to come up with ways and measures and get to your people every day, not just once a week. Conferences are going on every day with pastors, and I'm on these conferences. And so at 7.30 at night, for one hour, I'm talking to my members and others who are coming in. The numbers are just exploding. People are just joining others. They tell others, my pastor is speaking and, and he's given a word called word of, of waiting in the word. And they jump on. People from Chicago, Oklahoma, California. I'm getting people all across the country. And it's inspiring. But I also think it needs to be informative about what's going on. Well, I think that that's part of Texas always leading the way. That's what the Lone Star State <laughs> is all about. So real quickly, uh, Pastor Davis, can you give everyone that's watching this uh, segment uh, the information, uh, the website, or the link sure. that they can go to? Absolutely. My, uh, my church website site is the Palm Church, T-H-E, Palm, P-A-L-M, Church, and go to our Facebook page of the Palm Church, or they can go to my Facebook page, which is Willie Davis, and uh, we, we run it every evening at 7.30 p.m. And that's Central Time? Central Time, absolutely. 7.30 Central Time. So everyone, I figure you can do the math. I was just, you know, born and raised down in Georgia. I might have to struggle with that math. But everybody else, you can figure it out. So thanks so much, Pastor Davis. And I'll go to you, uh, Pastor Welch, for my final little point or question. What do you see the role of the Houston Pastors Council 
and the greater pastor councils that you have out there in Texas and also across the United States of America doing in this critical time of Christians being able to message and not get caught behind the eight ball with what we have just seen happen down at the River Church in Tampa? Well, again, great question. Look, I think as Pastor Willie said, uh, the first thing to do right now is be present. Uh, you know, there, we have a, a moment of need in our communities and in our nation uh, to find the ways, the creative ways to minister to the people. Uh, but it's also a moment, and I've been emphasizing this on the, the Zoom calls. We've got a statewide Zoom call each week. Today we actually have with the state attorney general uh, on, and uh, we've got the lieutenant governor last week. Just But pastors said, look, we've got to be together. Uh, and, you know, this is, as one other mentioned, you talk about Ben Franklin. Uh, of course, one of the things quotes reference to him as well is we will we must hang together or we will certainly hang separately. And uh, this has never been a more important moment for the church to be united across racial and denominational lines uh, to stand on the word of God uh, with the grace of Christ, but to bring that into the marketplace of government. And our core mission has been in the beginning to restore godly citizenship as a functioning ministry of every local church. We can't separate our citizenship out from our walk with Christ, and we can't take it out of the church. Uh, we do so at the peril of, of allowing the tyranny of godless government to rise as we watched happen. So we're asking pastors in every city, lock arms, come together uh, across these lines. Go find pastors that you don't know and met before, but who are like-minded, different denominations, uh, and different backgrounds, but our commonality and our love of freedom, our love of God. And frankly, it's time that we start following the feet of our ancestors and be willing to pay a price. And if that price means our lives, our fortunes, or our sacred honor, and all the above, so be it. And this is the moment for pastors to step up and lead the way. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Pastor Welch. And how can uh, other pastors out there get in contact with you and the Houston Pastors Council or the Texas Pastors Council? They can go to our website at uspastorcouncil.org. That's uspastorcouncil.org. And they can sign up uh, either to just get on our newsletter or to sign up as a pastor that they'd be interested in being part of the Pastor Council. And we are, we are providing a lot of information right now on the coronavirus issue and, and the facts and data that we think are helpful to pastors. But they can go to the website and sign up and we will be in touch. Well, Pastor Willie Davis and Pastor Dave Welch, I want to thank you so much. You are without a doubt two great Texans, two great men of God, and two great Americans. So God be with you and God bless you all. God bless you, you Carlos. We love you much, you. brother. All right. Thanks so much. Take care now.